The story of radiation is long and colourful. As we grow up, we're told the story of Chernobyl, believing that radiation is a monster that kills without remorse. When Greenpeace tells us that more than 200,000 people died due to Chernobyl, we think, yeah, that sounds about right. But the UN's World Health Organization says differently. Fewer than 50 people have died as a result of Chernobyl, most of whom being rescue workers. The worst case projection is that an additional 4,000 deaths might arise in the future. To put this in context, about 20% of us will one day die from cancer. An additional 4,000 deaths would represent less than one tenth of a percent an increase due to Chernobyl. Quite a difference from the 200,000 deaths the Greenpeace are telling us. But these accidents have allowed anti-nuclear power groups to promote their ideologies and build narratives of fear around nuclear power. This has come at a great cost. Human lives. Tens of thousands of people were evacuated by the authorities at Chernobyl and they were subsequently branded as untouchables. Suicide and alcoholism is rife within this population. But let's take a step back. What is radiation? Imagine this. This is a strand of DNA. In order for cancer and other damages to occur, the strands need to be completely cut in two. The larger and faster your ammunition, the more likely you are to hit the DNA. Beta radiation could be thought of as a ping pong ball. Really small and unlikely to do much damage. Alpha particles, on the other hand, is like shooting a cannonball at the DNA, much more likely to cut it in half. But it takes more than a single break of DNA for cancer to appear. You need your cells to misrepair a large number of breaks without the cell killing itself in order for cancer to develop. High doses of large particle radiation with high energies increases the likelihood of these breaks, which in turn increases the risk of bad repairs. Our regulations are based on a theory that asserts that radiation is always dangerous, regardless of dose. This is the linear no threshold model. Scientific studies have concluded that below roughly 100 millisievert, there is no increased risk for cancer. In New York City, the annual background radiation is about 0.9 millisievert a year. In Colorado, it's even higher, 4 millisievert a year. If we're to accept the linear no threshold model, we should see a significant increase in cancers in Colorado as compared to New York City. In Ramsar, Iran, it's almost 300 times higher than in New York City, but there's no evidence of a cancer epidemic. If we visit the playground at Pripyat, the city a few miles from the Chernobyl reactor, the radiation levels will be no higher than, say, southern Sweden. So much for a nuclear desert. When flying, we're exposed to higher levels of radiation due to the thin air absorbing less cosmic radiation. Flying from London to New York is roughly the equivalent of getting a chest x-ray. If radiation is as dangerous as they say, why aren't flight crews coming down with cancer center right? We need to challenge our preconceptions about radiation. Every second, 5,000 potassium atoms decay in our bones. At the same time, you are barraged by radiation from the very earth we tread, not to mention the constant bombardment from space. Radiation is everywhere and completely natural. Radiation can also be used as a tool. It has revolutionized medicine, allowing doctors to detect illnesses and injuries that otherwise could have been fatal. By radiating food, lives can be saved from foodborne illnesses. And radiation is like sunshine. Small doses are healthy, whilst large doses can be very harmful. Nuclear power has been demonized because of radiation. However, the risks have been severely overstated. The emissions of radiation from a nuclear power plant, even in the worst case scenarios, are very, very low. But radiophobia has caused immense and unnecessary suffering and continues to do so. Therefore, we must be prepared to conquer our fears of radiation.